Welcome to an example of integration using trigonometric substitution. Before we apply trig substitution though, we should make sure that basic u substitution won't work. For example, looking at this integral, if we let u equal the radicand of four x squared minus nine, du would be eight x dx, which does not fit the form of the integral. Or if we let u equal x cubed, differential u would be three x squared dx, which again does not fit the form of the integral. But because we have a square root, in the form of the square root of x squared minus a squared, we can try trig substitution. Notice how the square root doesn't match this form perfectly because we have four x squared instead of x squared. So instead of using the substitution x equals a secant theta, we're actually gonna use two x equals a secant theta. Notice two x squared would be four x squared. So we're gonna let two x equal a secant theta Notice here, a squared is nine, so a is three. So we have two x equals three secant theta. If we solve this for x, we would have x equals three halves secant theta. So differential x, or dx, would be equal to three halves secant theta tangent theta d theta. So while we're here, let's draw a reference triangle for theta. Notice using this equation here, secant theta would be equal to two x divided by three. So if we call this angle theta, since secant theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side, we can label the hypotenuse two x, the adjacent side three, then using the Pythagorean theorem, the length of this leg here would be equal to the square root of two x squared or four x squared minus three squared or minus nine. Now let's perform the substitution. We're gonna have the integral of the square root of four x squared minus nine. Looking at this equation here, notice if we square both sides, we can say that four x squared is equal to nine secant squared theta. So we'll have nine secant squared theta minus nine. Then differential x is equal to three halves secant theta tangent theta d theta. Let's go ahead and factor out the three halves. And we have secant theta tangent theta d theta divided by x cubed. And since x equals three halves secant theta, x cubed would be 27 eighths times secant cubed theta. Notice the 27 eighths would be in the denominator, which would be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of eight 27 And then we have secant cubed theta. Now let's begin to simplify. Looking at these two fractions here, notice we have a common factor of three here. There's one three and three and nine threes and 27. Common factor of two here, one two and two and four twos and eight. So this would be four ninths times integral of, now let's show why this square root will simplify to three tangent theta. If we factor under the square root, we would have the square root of nine times the quantity secant squared theta minus one. Well, the square root of nine would be three. And secant squared theta minus one is equal to tangent squared theta. And the square root of tangent squared theta is just tangent theta. So there's our three tangent theta, and then we still have times secant theta times tangent theta d theta divided by secant cubed theta. Notice we also have a common factor of secant theta. This simplifies to one, this would be secant squared theta. And we also have a common factor of three here. There's one three and three and three threes and nine. So now we have four thirds times integral of tangent squared theta divided by secant squared theta d theta. Now we'll write the integrand in terms of sines and cosines. Let's do this on the next slide. Well, tangent squared theta is equal to sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. And one over secant squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. Now 
Notice how we have cosine squared over cosine squared. This simplifies to one. So now we have four thirds times integral of sine squared theta d theta. Now we're going to apply a power reducing formula. And for review, sine squared x equals one half times the quantity one minus cosine two x. Notice how on the right side we double the angle here. So let's go ahead and factor out the one half. So we have four thirds times one half times integral of one minus cosine two theta. And this product simplifies. One factor of two, two factors of two. Let's go ahead and write this as two separate integrals. We'll have two thirds times the integral of one d theta minus two thirds times the integral of cosine two theta. Notice here, we'll have to apply u substitution where u is equal to two theta. So du equals two d theta, dividing both sides by two. Notice how when integrating in terms of u, we'll have an extra factor of one half. So this is gonna be equal to two thirds theta minus two thirds times the integral of cosine two theta is going to be one half sine two theta. Again, this is from the u substitution over here on the right. And of course, plus c. So we have two thirds theta. Again, this simplifies to minus one third sine two theta plus c. Our goal is to write this in terms of x, not theta. So we'll have to perform a substitution here for sine two theta, since using our reference triangle, our angle is theta, not two theta. So for sine two theta, we can use this double angle identity here, where if sine two x equals two sine x cosine x, we can go ahead and write this as two thirds theta minus one third times two sine theta cosine theta plus c. To write theta in terms of x, we'll have to use an inverse trig function, and then we can use our reference triangle to find sine theta and cosine theta. So going back to our reference triangle, we set this up using the fact that secant theta equals two x divided by three. Instead of using arc secant though, let's use arc cosine. Looking at our triangle, notice that cosine theta would be equal to three divided by two x, and therefore theta must be equal to arc cosine three divided by two x. So let's go ahead and write that down first. We have two thirds times arc cosine three divided by two x, then we'll have minus two thirds times sine theta times cosine theta plus c. Well, sine theta is equal to the square root of four x squared minus nine divided by two x, and cosine theta is equal to three divided by two x. Let's go and simplify this one more time on the next slide. Nothing simplifies in this first term. And if it's the second term, notice how we have three over three and two over two here. So we're left with minus the square root of four x squared minus nine divided by two x squared plus c. This would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this helpful.